Hey Nick, uh, I wanted to give you my thoughts about your thoughts because somehow uh, the thoughts from your mind were able to travel through physical reality and cause thoughts in my mind and I don't understand how it worked in terms of you know this stuff stuff thought stuff causing other thought stuff but not being able to circle back into the stuff stuff model I don't understand how we just communicated maybe maybe you'd say we didn't maybe but I think that's where I want to reverse your uh, model and say actually where we begin what we actually experience as human beings among other human beings among other beings in general um, is a world that's intrinsically purposeful that we necessarily participate in so we play an active role in the in the evolution of the cosmos we are part of the evolution and see the problem is that to to think that there's such a thing as the objective physical world composed of a finite set of parts or particles determined by transcendental mechanical laws you have to have completely left your immediate experience and gotten lost in this world of conceptual abstraction of um, you know the building of of systems of thought, of mathematical formulations, and so forth. Um, and these can be very useful. They've allowed us to build all these fancy technologies and engineer marvelous things, but they don't necessarily represent reality as it exists independent of us. Because they are a construction of ideas. And I think Synapse Snap posted a response to your video where he pointed out something that's pretty obvious that all around us we have these objects that um, were invented by ideas. So thought causes things in the world, forms to appear in the world all the time, especially among human beings. Um, but again, we shouldn't just assume that these, these two things are separate, mind and matter. Why can't mind and matter be part of the same process, which you would think, based on your own immediate experience, that that's what must be going on. We have no knowledge of the world independent of human experience. Knowing, by definition, is a participatory act. As an observer, when you measure the world, to put it in physical terms, you help to bring forth what is measured. And to put it in, in just everyday terms, when you interact with the world, uh, it spontaneously responds to what you gave it. And so there's this intelligent exchange going on at every level, not just between human beings. The world, bodies in the world, exchange meaning with one another and, and act accordingly. You know, sometimes there's miscommunication, but that's, that's what spurs evolution. That's what allows there to be creativity. You've got to have a little chaos mixed in, or else everything will just repeat itself forever. But we know it hasn't. You know, empirically, if you just look at what science says, cosmology says, about the evolution of the cosmos. It's always, at certain stages, doing something completely new. I mean, the whole beginning of the universe itself is founded on something that's completely uh, spontaneous and out of nowhere. So it's always graduating to a, more, a higher level of complexity. And if mind and matter are part of the same process, then as this complexity that we can observe from the outside becomes greater and greater, then so too does the interior experience associated with this complexity. So as atoms become molecules, become cells, become organisms, become mammals, primates, humans, humans using internet technology, it's getting more and more complex and therefore more and more sentient and conscious and aware and willful. It can anticipate the future more and more and more. So, again, this is mind and matter as the same process, rather than two separate substances, which, by saying that thought stuff and stuff stuff um, are only causally linked in one direction from stuff to thought, um, is, again, an abstraction. Return to your experience as a human being and recognize that, that you, your experience of being in a world among others, does play a causal role in what happens next. And again, I'm not implying that there's an I separate from the body 
like a puppeteer manipulating the strings from above. No, the body and the eye and, you know, our identities as what we think of ourselves as individuals, it's actually shared. My self comes out when I communicate with yourself and everyone else's selves and that's how we know what we are as individuals. You know, it's the relationship that comes first and our individuality, our sense of what we what we experience as being an ego is our relation to others. It's our ability to distinguish ourselves from someone else. Um, so, you know, hopefully I've communicated some thoughts to your mind and the conversation can continue. But uh, thanks for your video, Nick, and thanks for listening.